Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. And today's episode is going to be really rich and exciting and juicy because we have today with us the beautiful, amazing Jamie Elizabeth Thompson, expert on sex, intimacy, feminine power, feminine potency coach and it's something that I feel like it's arising within all of us women really awakening to our true power that it's from within that it's not about what is happening in the exterior it's not about what other people are saying or seeing but how we are truly feeling so I am personally very excited to dive really deep into today's topic whatever will come through and Jamie I am so happy that you are here today Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. And, you know, right before we hit the record button, Jamie, I was just sharing that I personally truly believe when women can step into allowing themselves into experiencing more pleasure, exploring their life from within, they can leave the guilt and shame on the side. But I still feel like it's still coming up for us, you know, the, the shame, the sexuality, the the guilt of the past, and it keeps stopping us as women from the full self-expression and the full enjoyment of life. And I know you're working with a lot of women. So I'm curious, like, how does that play a role when we are not fully, you know, express? as women and when we are truly not deeply connected with our pleasure and sensuality? Mm. Thank you for that question. And and I would love to offer a, a little context about kind of the lens that I hold with this work. And so I began working with, with women in pleasure and really reclaiming their access to their body and their their sexual freedom. And, and in that one thing I discovered is that often in relationships is the place where women get stuck. Like they feel like they can really access their deep connection in their personal practice, but there's challenges with actually bringing that into their relationship. So one of the things that I support women with is becoming an irresistible invitation for the for the man who is right for you or inviting your partner your current partner into his king and reigniting the erotic spark in your long-term relationship at any stage of your relationship and so often a lot of women come to me for these purposes like there's a there's a desire to reconnect with the masculine in their life and I love that you just asked this question because it it always comes back to our inner relationship with our pleasure. And so one of the teachings that I hold in my work is that the, the feminine sets the tone of the relational dynamic. And the way the feminine sets the tone is through her beingness, through the natural emanation that just emanates and radiates and fills up a room long before she even says anything. And when when we can really come back into relationship with our emanation, with the tone that we are setting, then there's that's really where feminine potency comes from. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to do that with personal practice and um, and just slowing down and letting go of some of the more uh, mover, doer, more masculine traits to actually surrender into the feminine essence. And that's a big part of my work. And the thing that I find is the biggest sticking point for women is it's so easy to say, oh yes, I want that. I want to be more embodied. And it's like this, this grand aspiration. But what we get to also be aware of is that power comes from responsibility. Mm -hmm. 
and that there's a greater level of responsibility that we will get to take when we surrender into our feminine. And sometimes there's this idea that women just want to collapse. Like we just want to escape and let go of all of it and, and collapse underneath it. And, and really in true embodiment of our feminine power, we are then holding a greater level of responsibility for that emanation, for that tone, for who we are going to be in life. And there's this, there's a distinction in this like power, you know, everyone wants to embody their power and their masculine power and feminine power are, are different and masculine power. A lot of women have a lot of people in our culture have a relationship with masculine power because that's what has been presented on the greater mainstream world stage. And this is like the power of our will, the ability to force our bodies to do things that is beyond what is actually right for us or is like in order to get something but it's not in connection with how it feels. Like it's not really deeply embodied in how do I feel right now? And on the, on the other side, feminine power comes from opening and surrender and, and alchemy and the ability to be with what's happening and be with our own internal experience, opening to reality, surrendering to reality. And then we make choices. And then, you know, this is where the integration of masculine and feminine comes in, but to really be responsible for how powerful we actually are is, I believe, the the, the key to really opening into the greater capacity of that deep feminine well of bliss and tenderness and potency that that everyone is sort of, you know, chasing after, but it but it feels elusive. Mm, I love that so much. Thank you for sharing that and, and bringing even more clarity into how and what you're teaching. And I'm curious, like, how did you discover your own feminine potency in your life? So now you're the embodiment of it for other women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my journey has been one like a like a roller coaster ride that has just swerved all over the place. And uh and it, it really began, I grew up in a more repressed kind of traditional Christian type of upbringing. And also like family of entrepreneurs, the, the kind of motto that I grew up with was work before play and the work is never done. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, it's like a lot, you know, very, you know, a lot, a, a lot of creation happening, but not a lot of replenishment and, and resourcing, or even, even the notion of pleasure wasn't celebrated or even invited. It was, it was um kind of repressed or uh, thought to be not important. And so my journey you know, coming out of that, I, I discovered the erotic arts and started uh, practicing that. I also explored being an exotic entertainer in Las Vegas and in, and, and then, you know, Tantra and, and working with energy and really sacred sexuality. And in that, I discovered that there was a well of energy in my body and that the more that I felt that and the more that I like drank my own inner nectar of deliciousness the the more radiant I felt and became and the more uh, I just enjoyed my life mm -hmm. and so my 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 journey of this was I was lucky to find uh, teachers and guides that supported me with really opening into the sacredness of this energy. And I was also uh, blessed. And it was also a very challenging time of, you know, coming through working in, in Las Vegas, because that's a, a very intense energy that actually is not what I would call feminine in nature. It's actually a commodified um hedonistic masculine overlay 
on what the true feminine is. And it's an extraction of the feminine. And in that arena, in the in that club, I discovered this incredible power that I had, right? That like internally sourced essence and power. And it was funny because a lot of the clients that I worked with, you know, the men in the gentlemen's club would sometimes bring in their, their wives. And those were my favorite clients because I loved connecting with the woman and seeing how, when she would start to move her body in different ways or start to connect with different energies, how she would light up and become this completely different version of her Herself. like a woman who came in like judgmental and kind of anxious would be embodied and in her pleasure and in her self-expression and I watched how the relational dynamic and the polarity between her and her partner and the intimacy between her and her partner would change and his attention would move from me to her because she was now embodying more of her feminine essence and in that journey I was like oh this can be taught like this can be transmitted from woman to woman as an embodiment as, as a, you know, without even explaining to her what I was doing, I would, you know, just be like, okay, now you do it. You know? And it was, it was this, it was this like mystical tra transmission. And, and that's really where I discovered, okay, I want to work with couples and I want to work with women to embody this energy that I have discovered. And, and that is what then led me out of that, you know, um, blessed, but challenging arena in, in Las Vegas into um, working with people more directly. And through a lot of training, I started to become more masterful with, with the energy and, and how to work with it and how to be with it in a way that was really nourishing to myself and not just leaving me empty. And, and that has been like one of the most incredible practices to share with other women in all the different ways that I've discovered to do that. Oh, that is so beautiful. And, uh, and I love that you're bringing in the embodiment and the energy because sometimes we can be, we can read things, we can hear things, we can, you know, like look at things, but it's truly the energy and the embodiment of when we can feel it, that we can bring it in and make it alive. And I love that you're working with couples and you're really like helping women call in the kink. But also when people are, I feel like in longer relationship, sometimes, you know, it can just like get into a routines and, and you just go through the motions. So how do you help couples for men to step into this kink energy when they're together for a longer period of time? Like, because you are saying that this can happen anytime. It doesn't matter if you're together a year or 10 years, you know, in, in the relationship. So how can women invite men or inspire men to step into this kink energy? And what does it even mean to be in this kink energy? Yeah. So I believe that the feminine is the eternal invitation to the masculine the 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 masculine when uh, when a man is aligned with his masculine his true benevolent masculine that he ultimately wants to serve the feminine as he wants to serve life like it's like that the, the masculine structure and all of the doing and all of the containing and holding and even that like penetrating energy when it's aligned and benevolent is in service to life. And when the feminine is aligned and in her potency, she is life itself, like life happening in, in her. And we all have masculine feminine energy, but this is the polarity and so if you are a, a, 
a feminine woman and you are wanting to uh, call forth the king in your man, the art of invitation is the practice of getting more clear and more centered and embodied in your desire and then inviting him into your desire through your embodiment. So it's, it's an opening of your, your, your womb. It's an opening of your heart. It's an opening of your pussy. It's an opening of your mind. It's, it's really, truly opening like the front of your body and allowing yourself to be in a receptive, vulnerable receiving of him while also being aware of what your desire is being fed by your own desire And then learning how to communicate that in a way that he can receive it and feels the opportunity in your desire to serve you. So if your heart is closed or your armor or protection is up or, you know, you have your own sword out or desire is being spoken as a demand, it's not going to occur as an opportunity to your man to step into his king by serving you. Because what we have to really understand as feminine women is our open, true, vulnerable, embodied desire is an invitation to our masculine partner to fulfill his purpose to fulfill his masculine purpose, which is to serve the feminine. And this is not the same as as serving the the feminine ego. This is not the same as as serving her preferences. This This is not like he needs to, you know, bow down to every expectation that she has, but truly that he is in service to the feminine well. And so when, when, when desire can be spoken and embodied as a clear, vulnerable, open-hearted invitation Mm -hmm. without expectation, Mm -hmm. there's really that that's like the beginning of how I I teach this Mm -hmm. to women. Jamie, and could you give us an example? Like, what would such an invitation sound like, be like, you know, how would you like invite with um, the desire? Yes, absolutely. So um, it, it, it would look like, um, like, like an example from, from my own life is I desired to experience more what I would call like transcendent, energetic oneness, like merging, like we are the, you know, uh, 17 limbed one being like merging into consciousness kind of sex. Like that's, I love this kind of like deep, deeply passionate, but also very subtle and attuned kind of lovemaking. And my partner uh, loves a, a more of like lustful, primal, carnal, like like super hot, sexy kind of lovemaking. And I love that as well. But I was desiring more of this other flavor. And so I asked him if you know, and it's first, so the, the first thing is like the, the part that we already covered, like, is the front of my body actually open to receiving him while I'm bringing this? That's the first thing. Because if I'm irritated, I'm in expectation, I'm in demand, I'm already feeling like I'm not going to get it. I'm in scarcity. Like any of these patterns need to be cleared before asking or the ask is not clear, right? It's clouded. It's not a clear signal, right? The feminine sets the tone. So is her signal clear, right? So the first piece is like really um, finding the yes in my body and coming from the yes in the asking. Mm -hmm. 
And then, and then I, I, uh, with sensitive information like this, I, I ask if it's a good time, you know, like, is, is it a good time? Is it a good time for me to share a, a desire that I have, or let me know when a better time is because, you know, for masculine men and really anybody, <laughs> It's nice to ask this question because if you're bringing something really deep and the person isn't emotionally and energetically prepared and available to receive that, um, then your chances of receiving your desire and being heard are, are less. And I also find that that's just really respectful. And that's another quality in, in, in the feminine is, is like to respect your man when you're, when you're sharing your desire and um and 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 respect is like not expecting him to say yes respect is like you are a sovereign being and i am asking you um and i i don't even like asking like it's like i'm sharing my vulnerable desire with you and you are welcome to step into this if you desire to serve me and bring me into even greater experiences of pleasure mm. right so the energetics are really important and that's one important part that I teach so that I'm spending some time on that in here um so you know finding out if he's available and then and then and then and then asking in a way that is like oh you know what I would really love to receive is the experience of us being in a, a, a merged oneness energetic place. Like I would love to experiment with subtle energy in our lovemaking. And I feel like that would bring me so much pleasure and it would just feel like an erotic adventure that we could go on together. Are you open to playing with that with me? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like, it's like this invitation that then feels like I'm sharing what it would feel like for me to do it. I'm sharing what it is that I want and I'm sharing it from the place of what it feels like to experience that mm. right now. Mm. And, um, and, you know, and, and he then, you know, has, has some questions about how to, you know, like, well, so what is it, you know, the, the masculine then is going to get really practical and granular and, and, and this is the, their nature, you know, so like, how would I do that? Um, and, you know, so I, I then, uh, I showed him a video, you, you know, like I showed him a video of something else and was like, oh, it's like, it's like this, you know, like it's, it's like this. And, um, and then I, I also, uh, I, I, in, in, in like the how I'm like, well, it would be like slowing down a lot. It would be like breathing together, you know, like we start with just breathing together and eye gazing and just like being in our presence and consciousness together before we, before we dive in. Um, and then, and then I also was like, you know, it's like that moment when you like are almost touching, but not quite like that, like it's like, that is highly erotic for me. And so, you know, after this, we started practicing and, and he was like, great. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's do it. Um, and, and so we just began the discovery and the practice of this, this kind, this other flavor of, of lovemaking from that point. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And also like, you know, step by step and how it would look like and feel like and what it could sound like when we're sharing our desires. So I feel like this can be applied to so many different things in life. And like you said, I feel like it's so important to, it's not even asking permission, but asking if it's the right time. You know, because I've learned it with my husband when we started dating years ago, I just came in and like a big water, you know, Yes. <laughs> I didn't yeah. give him because I was in like now and it's now and, and I didn't, there was not the respect, like you said, it's like you can say yes, you can say no. And it's not like my way or highway, you know, because if you don't do that, then I'm not being served or I'm not feeling love or I'm not feeling supported. So 
um, really creating the safe space when the feminine can express herself and her desires and the masculine has a choice to respond. So I feel like it's such a beautiful dynamics when we are both feeling honored, we're both feeling respected and maybe it's not right now or maybe I'm not open right now and not taking it personally and celebrating that we were able to share, that we were able to show up. Yes. Can I share one more thing about what you said? So the experience that you shared, and I love it when people give me experiences because it's really, I love helping unpack that. And the one that you shared is very common for a lot of women. And it's, it's that you, you call it like a floodgate, like your desire comes through at a thousand miles an hour. And it's just like, the dam is breaking and it's like, this is what I want. You know, and, um, and, and in that, I mean, there's such a beautiful, like a fulgent feminine energy in that. And what it's lacking is the own containment of one's inner masculine. So the, our own inner masculine holds our desire. And so there's a, there's a capacity that we can build to be able to hold our desire. It's like, it's like, so it doesn't just have to come out, but it can be like nourished and circulated in the feminine body system. And so we are like, we are being nourished. Like we are drinking the superfoods of our own desire. And then when it's like, it's like hot and it's like visceral and it's ready. And we've been steeping, like we're like marinating in it. You know, we're just marinating in it. Then we invite him into it. And it's actually an opening of our body and then an invitation for him to come in. The floodgates of the desire is like a pressing out and forward, which is actually a projection of masculine energy. And it's harder to actually receive because we're, we're, we're like, we're, we're bringing it with a lot of, we're with a lot of force. So it's, it's fun to really work with the energetics of this so that we can be more full. Like, it's like, we're full and embodied in our desire and we're inviting him into it. Mm, Thank you. Thank you so much for going into that, you know, and, and, and going a little bit deeper. And I know that women who are listening right now, they will have so many more questions and they will want to go deeper with you, Jamie. So yeah. what is the best way to connect with you for women who want to step into their feminine potency and maybe they want to deepen their relationships or call in the king yeah. where they can connect with you and how? Yes. Um, so social media is a, is a great place. I'm talking about things like this and more. Um, so I am on Facebook at um, facebook.com slash Miss Jamie Elizabeth and Instagram at holistic sex coach. And I'm sure those links will be in the show notes. Is that you? Okay. And you are welcome to send me a direct message about what you received here. I love hearing that and any curiosities or, or questions you have about going deeper on your own journey. And there are three offerings I have coming up this year. Um, One is about reigniting the erotic spark in your long-term relationship. So that's really calling your current man into his king and his masculine potency. We discussed that a little today. And then there's also another very accessible offering that um, is called She's the One that is, is about becoming the irresistible invitation for the right man for you to find you. And this is for women who are seeking long-term relationship. And then one of my signature offers that is a group, um, a six week group is called sex magic cervix. And that is a a path to unlocking the uh, capacity of your orgasm and cervical dearmoring. So it's really about opening to cervical orgasm and the deeper internal orgasms that really bring on these like transcended DMT like states and just like delicious bliss for many days on end. So those are the things I have coming up. Reach out if you feel called to anything or you just want to connect. 
Thank you so much, Jamie, for all your work and also for being here today and the beautiful embodiment you are for other women of what it feels like and looks like when we truly come from within, from our radiance, from the feminine potency. And um, it's so beautiful to witness you in your work and in your element. Yes, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here.